All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to our webinar for today. Uh, my name is Joe Bacella, Director of Client Success here at Chaken Analytics, and I'd like to welcome you to Identifying Industry Shifts. Presenting today is Mark Chaken, founder and CEO of Chaken Analytics. This webinar is being recorded and a copy of which will be sent to all registrants. Please submit your questions using the GoToWebinar chat window. Michelle Greenblatt and I will be available to answer your questions. A Wall Street trader, stockbroker, and analyst for more than 40 years, Mark Chaikin created the Chaikin Power Gauge Rating, a proven 20-factor model that uniquely combines fundamental and technical factors. To tell us more about this, here's Mark Chaikin. Thank you, Joe, and welcome, everybody. In this afternoon's webinar, we're going to talk about a subject we haven't covered in the last few months of webinars, namely how to use sectors and ETFs to trade profitably uh, by identifying sector and industry shifts and we have a big industry shift going on in terms of the XLE, the energy ETF and uh, of our presentation we're going to go to our live desktop app to show you some of the new sector and uh, ETF functionality that we've already added with more to come. So why Mark Chaikin? Why are you taking an hour out of your precious time to listen to this webinar? Well, I've been on Wall Street for 50 years I've survived 10 bear markets. In January, when we were basically heading straight down, it looked like that experience would be very relevant. Not so anymore, as we're within 1% of the rally peak off the February lows, but certainly good to have lived through uh, down markets and understand how they can wreak havoc on a portfolio. For 45 years, I've been using technical analysis in combination with fundamental research because I think you need both of them to make money in the stock market whether you're a trader or an investor. Along the way I've been mentored by some of the smartest and most successful institutional money managers and also by people at firms that I work for. The culmination of everything I learned from my institutional clients and my colleagues is the Chaikin Power Gauge rating. Everything that I learned in 45 years on Wall Street is embodied and embedded in the power gauge rating, which is the culmination of my life's work. We've been fortunate to have had exposure for the power gauge rating on CNBC and Fox Business, and just a month ago, we were written up in Barron's Electronic Investor column as one of the two top quantitative sites on Wall Street, something I'm very proud of. In the next 45 minutes, we're going to talk about why you should trade ETFs. And I'd like to ask you by a show of hands, which on a webinar means typing Y into the question box, how many of you trade sector spider ETFs, market ETFs like the SPY, QQQs, or individual ETFs? Let's type a Y in the question box. And I see that many of you do, and I think those of you who do are going to find today's presentation particularly useful because Chaikin Analytics has a very unique way of enabling you to use our sector and ETF rankings and lists to both find the right ETFs to trade and also the best stocks in the best ETFs. And to do that, we use something we call the power bar to rank ETFs, and the power bar is very simply the number of stocks that power gauge ratings in any sector or ETF. We'll also show you how to use check and relative strength and money flow for both ETFs like the spiders and for individual stocks and individual sector ETFs. It's important to identify industry shifts, and we're going to show you how to use sectors and ETFs once you've identified the shifts to trade more profitably. And finally, we're going to show you how to quickly find the strongest power gauge stocks in the strongest ETFs. Now, why trade ETFs? Well, you have a few choices in the market if you want to put money to work. You can trade individual stocks. They're liquid. We all know that. You can sell them and buy them anytime during the trading day and even after hours. On the right side of the spectrum are mutual funds. They're diversified portfolios, but you can only 
buy them or sell them once a day at the end of the day. And there's no way to really know what's in those mutual funds. And the fact is that actively managed mutual funds have underperformed the market with higher fees over the last 12 to 15 years. So right in the middle are ETFs. They're diversified like mutual funds, but they trade like stocks, and they have a low cost typically. So they've become very popular. ETF started with the spiders. It's still the most actively traded ETF. It's basically an ETF that keys off the S&P 500 index, as many of you know who trade it. There are now more than $2.5 trillion in ETFs that surpass mutual funds in terms of assets under management. ETFs have become popular with investors and traders who want to diversify, who like transparency, lower fees, and liquidity. Although we saw on August 24th that liquidity is a two-edged sword. I call that market order Monday. That's the day that the Dow futures were down 1,000 points pre-market, and a lot of people put in market sell orders on ETFs particularly to raise cash quickly, but many of those ETFs traded well below net asset value. And there have been a few changes having to do with eliminating stop orders on the New York Stock Exchange um, and all sorts of federal investigations about how they can do this better. But in general, liquidity is good unless it gets abused on a day like August 24th of 2015. And there are a growing variety of ETFs. There are now over 1,500 ETFs. So whereas once ETFs were an easy answer as an alternative to picking stocks, now there's much more information. And if there's anything that we do well at Jake and Analytics, it's to solve the information overload problem. Information overload is our biggest bugaboo. We live in the age of distraction. That's what it says right on the middle of this graphic. Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and in the stock market, CNBC, 24-7 news cycle, Yahoo Finance, Google Finance, Finviz, whatever you use, there's just an awful lot of information out there. And in order to trade successfully, you need a solution to the information overload problem. And our solution is taking analytics for both iPad and desktop. And we're going to show you the live desktop when we highlight some new features that we rolled out two weeks ago in Chaken Analytics having to do with sectors. So how does Chaken Analytics lead to larger profits? Sorry about that. It does this by giving you what I call a directional edge. Now, I ran an options department for five years, and I watched traders muddle around lose money in options because they had no real sense of where a stock was going and nothing to base it on, even if they had a feeling. How many of you have been in that position? Knowing that you wanted to trade options but not having that extra information you need, what I call the directional edge. I know many of you have because we've gotten that kind of feedback in the onboarding sessions that Joe and Michelle do. So we give you that directional edge doing the heavy lifting on the fundamentals. That's the power gauge rating. We also include the technicals, both in the rating, 15% of the model is technical, 85% fundamental, and on the taken charts, where we take two simple technical indicators, as you'll see in a minute, combine them with the power gauge rating, which summarizes the fundamental potential of a stock. All of that is a quantitative model called the Chaikin Power Gauge Rating. In addition, we have buy and sell signals, particularly relevant to swing trading and options trading, because better entry and exit points are your key to fine-tuning your profits, and we'll show some of that as we move along. Now, I want to start out by focusing on the stock market. I know a lot of people are confused at this point. We've had a six-and-a-half-year bull market, seven-year bull market. And if you turn on CNBC, you'll find a lot of bears on CNBC. But the fact is the market is trading very well, as we'll see when we get into some of the stock charts that we're going to look at. So let's start out by what's worrying technical analysts. Two charts here, 
courtesy of Bespoke Investment Group, which does very, very good work. The chart on the top is the S&P 500 for the last year. Trend line drawn that comes in at about 2075 right now. Those red and green bands are overbought, oversold, standard deviations. The key here is that a lot of market technicians are turning bearish because the market has not been able to break that trend line in this very strong rally off the February bottom. The second problem for most market technicians or many market technicians is that rounding top in the S&P 500 that's formed over the last year. Now, there are plenty of patterns and people on CNBC who will tell you that this is the kiss of death for the stock market. And, it's, and we're, in a, we're actually in a bear market. There are some analysts who are saying we're in a bear market. Well, the energy stocks don't think we're in a bear market, and uh, healthcare is starting to move back up again. So I don't see that bear market. But how does Chaikin Analytics help you know where the market's headed? Three unique indicators within Chaikin Analytics to give you an edge on the people who are getting their information from CNBC. First, check the Chaikin Money Flow for the SPY, the most actively traded ETF in the US. Chaikin Money Flow measures institutional buying and selling. And as you'll see from the next chart, fantastic way to get an inside look at what the institutions are really doing in the stock market. How many of you are familiar with Jake and Money Flow? If you are, type, type a big CM in the question box, please. It's on all your brokerage platforms. You can get it on stockcharts.com. And it's a very important component, as you'll see, of Jake and Analytics. And I see a lot of you are familiar with that. But we've gone way beyond that with the Jake and Power Gauge rating. Here's all I was known for were technical indicators. Now we've moved the bar. And speaking of bars, check the power bar for the SPY. As I said earlier, the power bar tells you the number of stocks with bullish, neutral, or bearish power gauge ratings in any index, ETF, industry group. So right now, with everybody telling you we're in a bear market, you've got 88 stocks in the S&P with bullish power gauge ratings. That'll go up today because we had a big up day, almost 1%, and only 77 with bearish ratings. For, for a reason that we're going to delve into, all through 2018, there were, starting in April, more stocks with bearish than bullish ratings in the S&P. And there's a very good reason, and the reason is something known as the FANG stocks that my good friend Bob Lang coined along with Jim Cramer. So check the power bar. If it's positive, Rally is in better hands. And then finally, this is unique, and it's something we started teaching on these webinars about two and a half months ago. There is an ETF called the Guggenheim Equal Weighted S&P. Now, as most of you know, the S&P 500 index is cap weighted, meaning that the stocks with the larger market caps, like Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, Google, Apple, ExxonMobil, have a much bigger influence in the movement of that index, then the stocks that we probably haven't heard of, smaller market caps, but are still in that big large cap index called the S&P 500. So we have a symbol in Chaikin Analytics called RSP. That's the Guggenheim Equal Weighted S&P. And starting in May, as you'll see, it started underperforming the SPY itself but something happened about two months ago. So let's look at the market through the lens of the unique Chaikin indicators to that directional edge, not just for individual stocks, but for the market itself. So let's go back to the spring of 2015. The market bumped up into resistance on the S&P 500 index between 2100 and 2135. It was being led by the FANG stocks. Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, and Google were leading the way. But when you look down here, I've superimposed the relative strength of the RSP versus the SPY on the bottom of the chart. Starting in May, the average stock in the S&P was underperforming. 
In other words, the foot soldiers were not following the generals into battle. And that's why the stock market had a very difficult time getting through resistance 2100, 2130. Ultimately, the market rolled over. You can put any label on why it happened. China, the Fed, I'm going to say it was Disney coming up with a very, very um, out-of-the-box negative earnings surprise having to do with ESPN subscribership contracting, but whatever the reason, we had that awful waterfall on August 24th, what I call Market Order Monday, and then we went on to form what's called a W bottom. The previous W bottom in the market was in October of 2011, four years earlier. Every bottom subsequent to October 11th until this waterfall decline in August of 2015 was, was what's known as a V-shaped bottom. Market dropped 3 to 5 percent, sometimes 8 percent, and proceeded to then rally almost in a straight line to new highs. That's why everybody on CNBC who was saying buy the dips was right, and that was fairly easy money. But a W bottom is more complex. So what happened here? You rallied up. It was a very, very big rally. It was from 1870 to over 2000 in the S&P 500 in two weeks. But check and money flow stayed red or negative. So the institutions were not buying into that rally. Here it is. Then we came down, tested the low in the S&P cash. We equaled the low. And then we took off. And notice how the institutions bought into that second wave up and pushed the market right back up above 2100 where it once again ran into resistance. And we dawdled around for two months, broke down in January. The market actually started down on December 15th. Now who knows the importance of that date? If you, type, if you do, type a big FED into your question box. Because December 15th was the day that the Fed raised rates for the first time in seven years. And the market immediately dropped. Now, if you had been watching our webinars, we were offering a special video that my associate John Schlitz, who writes our morning market insights column, put together. You would have been expecting a decline. Now, would you have been expecting a decline of that magnitude, over 10%? Perhaps not. Typically, it was 5 to 8% again came down in a waterfall decline in January, rallied back up, forming a potential W bottom again, but something was very different here than in August, September. Institutions were actually buying on the rally. How do we know that? Because check and money flow was green and not red. So then when we came back down to 1812 on the S&P 500 index, Money flow was very, very positive. The institutions were buying the dips, and they've been buying ever since. So we got oversold yesterday, two days ago actually, in our overbought oversold indicator. It dropped under 30 uh, based on a sideways movement in the index, and we've constructed this to do that occasionally. And money flow stayed positive. That's a buy signal. And that's why we've stayed bullish. More stocks with bullish than bearish power gauge ratings. Check and money flow is green through this whole period from February 11th when the market bottomed out when Jamie Dimon, the CEO of J.P. Morgan Chase, said he was buying $25 million worth of his own stock. And by the way, J.P. Morgan reports earnings on Thursday, so that's very important. We'll look at that in a few minutes. And the market has now rallied up and run into resistance once again. And this point, it's at 2075, that downtrend line. We're in a position, if the earnings reports that come out in the next week are positive or if companies give po positive guidance, as they may, because the U.S. dollar is weak, whereas it had been strong in the first quarter of 15, providing headwinds to the market, we may break through that resistance, and then we've got to see if the market can get above 2100, 2135. But for all these reasons, including the very important and unique indicator relative strength of RSP to SPY, the smaller cap names in the S&P 500, and many of these stocks have market caps of six, seven, eight billion dollars, so they're not small cap stocks, 
but relative to Apple and Google and Facebook, they are small. This is all very bullish, and it's added up to me maintaining a buy-the-dips mentality heading into first quarter earnings season. We'll reevaluate it every week as the market, if it breaks out, runs up again into resistance at 2100, 2130. But no reason to panic in my view, no evidence that we're in a bear market. Anybody who tells you that is smoking something that is only legal in Colorado and a few other states. So that's the state of the market. And you can use the spider to put money to work and mirror the performance of the S&P 500. Now at Chaikin Analytics, we believe in exceptionalism. We believe that we're here to help you outperform the market. So the spider is a convenient way to put money to work, but we think we can do better for you. And the way they do that is through a disciplined methodology. We've been in a volatile market. Volatile markets demand a disciplined methodology. So this triangle, this pyramid, really encapsulates a five-step methodology that my wife Sandy teaches. She's mastered it. She trades very well. Her webinars are well received because they're based on her trading experience. At the top of the pyramid, check and power gauge rating. Very simple display, very powerful math under the surface. ETF rankings, very important. Sector and industry group rankings are critical because that's your way of knowing where the big money is flowing in and out. At the bottom of the pyramid, just two technical indicators, shake in money flow and shake in relative strength. When you combine that with the power gauge rating, you've got all the information you need to trade or invest successfully. And in the middle, that sweet spot, check and buy and sell signals. And we'll see examples of that as we go. Now, the check and power gauge rating looks simple. I think you'd all agree this looks like the gas gauge on your car. But I can't stress how powerful it is under the surface. I've often said that the check and power gauge rating is like a Chevrolet with a Ferrari engine under the hood. And the reason I say that is because in a one-year research project in 2010, I reduced 200 factors down to 20 and grouped them into four components. And they've worked for over five years since the first product became commercially available in January of 2011 in the form of research reports on 5,000 stocks every night. With our new sector and ETF view, which is the ETF view is coming, we'll have one page tear sheets on individual ETFs as well. But the key here is that the model works because it's based on how the market works. These 20 factors are what institutional investors look at every day to make decisions. Part of the reason that the model is 85% fundamental and 15% technical, because the major institutions who are managing mutual funds or hedge funds are looking at fundamental factors. So if you're going to compete with them, recognizing information overload and time are your biggest challenges, you need a tool like the power gauge rating to do the fundamental heavy lifting for you. Nobody can research more than a few stocks. When we first launched the power gauge reports, someone gave us feedback and said, it used to take me two hours to research a stock like this. Now you guys do it for me in seconds. There's an investment advisor at Morgan Stanley in, in New York. It's a four-man team that runs $500 million. She has been quoted as saying, Chaikin Analytics gave me back my weekends money manager does her own independent research to supplement Morgan Stanley's research and it used to take her eight to ten hours and she knew what she was doing. Now the power gauge does that for her. So I've highlighted earnings surprise which is one of the factors in the model. I learned this from one of my mentors George Douglas at Drexel Burnham who built one of the finest quantitative databases on Wall Street because we're heading into earnings season. It started yesterday when Alcoa reported after the close. 
It's continuing X, one of the rails, reporting a little better than expected this morning, this afternoon rather, and it'll continue for the first week of earnings season with the major banks on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, Wells Fargo, JP Morgan City, and Bank America. Earnings surprises are very important. A lot of people are nervous about trading during earnings season because of the volatility surrounding earnings reports, and they should be unless you have a directional edge. So I've often said that the power gauge rating is like a GPS during earnings season. If a company reports a positive or negative earnings surprise, the analysts start changing their estimates. He meant that analyst estimate revisions which key off earnings surprises and guidance from corporations are the single biggest short-term driver of stock price movement. That's why they're in the model and analyst ratings are also in the model. For those of you who don't like to trade stocks during earnings season and I'd encourage you to consider doing that based on the power gauge rating on both the long and the short side if you do put options you have limited risk. For those of you who don't like trading individual stocks, you can buy the Spider or the Triple Qs or the Best Sector ETFs, and we're going to show you how to do that. So a little bit of performance data. Using the Russell 3000 as our universe, 16 years of data, the average very bullish stock in the Chaikin Power Gauge rating methodology was up almost 20% a year, and the average very bearish stock was down 1%. Now that's impressive but not as impressive as what happened in 2015. In 2015, because the energy stocks were weak and small cap stocks were weak, very bearish Chaikin Power Gauge rated stocks in the Russell 3000 were down 17%. These were the Kinder Morgans of the world, range resources, also the big railroads like Union Pacific, CSX, Kansas City Southern, 3D printing stocks, cloud computing stocks, whole series of sector shifts. Biotech was weak, especially small cap biotech in 2015. The very bullish stocks were down only 1%. So it's that ability to differentiate between very bullish and very bearish stocks and sectors that have bullish or bearish potential that's very embedded and shaken and gives you that directional edge. Now two other proof points. We have a partnership with NASDAQ that was launched two years ago where we created three co-branded NASDAQ Chaikin indexes. We basically took their large cap, small cap, and dividend achiever indexes after they spent five months stress testing Chaikin analytics and the power gauge ratings, and we used that methodology that's documented in that little pyramid to create Chaikin NASDAQ power indexes that are subsets of the large cap, small cap, and dividend achiever. The goal was to see if on a buy and hold basis, because these indexes get rebalanced every 12 months, the last rebalance was April 1st, to see whether the Chaikin methodology could improve on an underlying index, and it did it in spades. Large cap, small cap, and dividend achiever indexes outperformed formed by two to 800 basis points, meaning 4% a year in the aggregate. So if the small cap index, was at, which was actually down over the two-year period, was down 4%, the Chaikin NASDAQ small cap power index was up 4%. It's a very powerful proof point that whether you're a trader or an investor, the power gauge rating is useful. And then finally, we have a partnership with firm LLP out of Chicago, and on December 7th, they launched the Chaikin Low Beta Growth Portfolio Unit Investment Trust. Using the S&P 500 as a universe, we came up with a 20-stock equally weighted portfolio. They've launched Series 1 and then Series 2, and both of these trusts are outperforming the S&P. So we're doing it in an index with NASDAQ, hopefully an ETF creator will license it, and we're doing it with real money through First Trust. So how do we find these stocks? Well, whether you're doing a top-down, rules-based methodology, or bottom-up stock picking or ETF picking, that we call the classic Chaikin bull. Power gauge rating is bullish, which means that the fundamentals 
are lined up positively for that stock. It's outperforming the market. Plenty of documentation over the last 40 years that stocks that outperform the market over the last six months will continue to do so. And then check and money flow needs to be strong to qualify as a classic check and bull, showing you that the institutions are buying the stock. Well, here's an example of it. Tyson Foods, one-year chart, power gauges on the bottom. It's in neutral occasionally. But look right above that. Relative strength, which we portray as a heat map, not a number like you see in Investor's Business Daily, has been green since late May of 2015. What does that mean? It means the market agrees with the model. I've lost more money in my career bucking the market, and I would imagine that many of you on the webinar today have had similar experience. If you have, please type a big T in the question box. T for terrible thing to do to buck the market because the market is bigger than all of us. So here's Tyson. It's one of the 20 stocks in the First Trust Chaken Low Beta Growth UIT, both Series 1 and Series 2. And when it went into that portfolio in December, it had great money flow. It was actually breaking out to new highs. Then it pulled back. And in f late January, early February, they reported a positive earnings surprise. We had a buy signal in Chaken Analytics, a money flow buy. How does that get triggered? Well, this is all on our website, but this is a really simple signal. The power gauge rating has to be bullish. That's the directional edge, the wind at your back, if you will. Stock needs to get oversold and then have positive money flow and move back above a short-term moving average. Eight period exponential average. And so Tyson has moved up, and you see up here on the top of the chart that we have new earnings functionality in Chaken. So you know when you look at this chart that Tyson's is due to report earnings on Monday, May 9th. You see what the estimate is, and there's a big green exclamation point. That's a bullish earnings alert. And if you tap on EPS, and I'll show you this when we go to the live version, you'll see exactly what's happening to create that bullish earnings alert. But the bottom line is this stock has continued to make new highs. It got put into that first 52 and it's trading up here at 68. So it's a classic shaken bull and it doesn't get any better than that. Now a classic shaken bear, the exact opposite trading, underperforming the market, money flow is weak and Kinder Morgan has been the poster child for that. Now I said when I began the webinar that there was an interesting shift going on. The XLE, the Select Spider Sector Energy ETF, which represents the large cap energy stocks in the Standard & Poor's 500, has broken a long-term downtrend line for over a year. Price of oil has moved up. The doomsayers who said $20 don't appear to be correct. And stocks like Kinder Morgan are trying to move up. Now, it's interesting that with the price of oil having almost an 80% increase from the lows, that Kinder Morgan is much closer to its low than its high. The power gauge turned bearish at 40 back in May, and you could have been out of the stock not suffering as it went to $12 or below 12 but even with Warren Buffett buying it, with some big hedge funds buying it, it's still having trouble breaking out above that 22 and a half level where it drops. So there's a lot of room between oil rallying and these fracking companies reporting better earnings. There's tons of debt in these companies, but the bottom line is you don't have to know any of that because the power gauge was bearish. So now let's look at how you find these stocks in Chaken Analytics. Two really easy ways to find bullish and bearish stocks. <clears throat> we have Chaken Hot Lists where you can find featured bulls and bears. In this case I've highlighted Power Gauge Hot Lists. All stocks with a bullish rating and also those stocks where the rating just turned bull. This past week 49 of them. So very simple to click on the list. You can export it 
as symbols and then look at it uh, at your leisure or you can study it within Chaikin. And then our new stock screener, which really puts you in the driver's seat. So what did I do to create this list of 23 stocks that you see on the screen? I started out by selecting a universe of stocks in strong industries, requiring that the power gauge be bullish. And then I just looked at money flow and relative strength, which are two go-to indicators. And I said I wanted to know um, a list of stocks where there had been a buy signal and it filtered down 5,000 stock universe to 23 names in literally seconds. And right there at the top of the list, D.R. Horton, home builder. There's a dearth of inventory for new houses and young people are starting to buy new houses again instead of renting. Why? Because wages are going up, jobs are being created, and there's more mobility. So the screener found D.H. Horton. We also like KB Homes, which we made our bullish stock of the week a couple of weeks ago. And you see some of the electric utilities that are still doing well with treasury yields on the 10-year down near one-year lows. So people are looking for yield and they're finding it in utility stocks. And the screener is your way to get this information. Now, we've been talking about the power gauge rating and relative strength. We call that the dynamic duo. But just be aware that relative strength stands alone as a bullish or bearish indicator. Now, what I mean by that is that you can get a stock like Amazon where the fundamentals are very overvalued. And yet this stock can move up for six, eight, ten months. Momentum stocks. Traders love them. But if the fundamentals don't support that move, you're on a high wire without a safety net. So just be aware that relative strength stands alone, but you've got to be cautious if the power gauge isn't supporting it. So let's look at two examples. And one of them is complex because the times are changing. So we've been using First Solar. We recommended it a number of times as a bullish stock of the week. It's moved up from $50 to above 70 Along the way, it got a recommendation from Goldman Sachs. And the power gauge and the relative strength of the money flow were all positive. So the dynamic duo was strong. And something totally unexpected happened last week. First Solar, which isn't expected to report earnings until May 5th, where the analysts are actually raising their estimates, held what's known as an analyst day last week. And in this hosting of Wall Street analysts, they declined to give a forecast for 2017. Well, if there's one thing that Wall Street hates, it's uncertainty, and you sure got it in First Solar. Personality change. First Solar has been dropping steadily for six days. It stabilized today. It was up about 1%, a little less. But it's now starting to underperform the market. The power gauge has turned neutral. So if you're a trader and you are following the Chaikin recommendations or methodologies, time to reevaluate. Take your profits on rallies. If you bought up near the highs, which I hope you didn't, it could be a time to take small losses. Because until they report earnings on May 7th or May 5th and give guidance, there's a lot of uncertainty for solar. But there was no uncertainty on another stock in the solar energy industry. But before I get to that, I might point out that one of our new subscribers actually bought First Solar that had that buy signal ahead of earnings report and gave us this testimonial that said, using Chaikin Analytics for several weeks, have closed out two trades for gains of 70 and 115%. Now, one of them was for solar, and what he did was he bought it and he sold it when he got to that upper band. I have the most sensitive mouse on the planet. So, Sun Edison, same industry group. We're going to be talking about ETFs, sectors, and industry groups. Power gauge rating on Sun Edison turned bearish in July. The stock was 28.30. Merrill Lynch had a buy recommendation on it, but the institutions were selling it. There have been a series of negative earnings surprises, and we know that because every time they report, we draw that little dotted line, color the 
EPS logo, either red, gray, or green, to indicate whether they had a positive or a negative earnings surprise. But here's the dynamic duo of relative strength and Chaikin power gauge rating working against you. And this stock, as I've said on webinars for the last two months, is likely to file for bankruptcy shortly. And sadly, a lot of people wrote it all the way down. Merrill Lynch put out a sell recommendation at $3 five weeks ago. Now, I suppose that's better than watching the stock go bankrupt. But that's a long ride down. So you to the dynamic duo. First Solar was a big winner. It's now turned neutral. Sun Edison, you could have dodged a bullet and avoided some real pain. We got this testimonial. I bought Sun Edison, Chaikin rated it poorly, and it went down. If I had had Chaikin Analytics, I would have bought First Solar instead. That's what this game of trading and investing is all about. It's about alternatives, sifting through them, and finding the right answer. Now, the rest of the webinar is going to be about sectors and ETFs and how to trade them profitably. We're going to look at how to use the power bar rankings with the select spider sector ETFs to find the sectors with the best potential. I'm going to show you how to drill down on a strong sector and then use the power bar rankings to find ETFs in that sector with the strongest potential. And then finally, how to find the strongest stocks in the strongest ETFs. This is a top-down process that can yield profits at any level. So here on the next slide is a blow-up of our Select Spider Sector Power Bar Rankings. It's in our list manager. The nine Select Spider Sector ETFs plus the SBY sorted by the stocks with the most bullish versus bearish power gauge rating. So right now, heading into today's action, five big sector ETFs with better power, uh, power bar ratings than the SPY. Utilities have been going up for a long time. Financials, actually not performing well until today. Technology, healthcare, and materials. And at the bottom, energy. And that's going to change as analysts start to change their view of energy stocks, and that'll be reflected in the power gauge ratings. Now, let's take a look at healthcare. This is the XLV. It's the large cap spider sector ETF. A lot of people trade these instead of picking individual stocks. It's broken. It's downtrend. Jake in long-term trend line, double exponential smooth moving average. Now, you could trade the XLV, which a lot of people do, but you're buying the large cap healthcare stocks. But if you scroll down a bit, you'll see that we rank and sort and identify ETFs in a variety of categories, industry group, style, like growth or value, or large cap or small cap. So in this case, I tapped on the health icon, and up popped 20 healthcare ETFs. Talk about information overload. If you didn't want to trade the XLV, but you wanted to look for a smaller cap ETF, you've got to pick from 20 names. So we help you by ranking them by power gauge rating. So right at the top is the PTH, the Power Shares Momentum Healthcare ETF. 17 stocks with bullish ratings, only three with bearish ratings. Down at the bottom is a biotech ETF, BBC or XBI, which many of you are familiar with, 10 bullish, 45 bearish. So if you're going to trade a healthcare ETF, you want to look for the ETF with better potential based on the power gauge rating. So here's a chart of the PTH. It hasn't yet broken out above that long-term trend line. Today's price action, maybe it will. But we can drill down and see what they own. And what they own is displayed, sorted by power gauge rating. So they've got a mix of large cap, mid, and small cap healthcare stocks. One of them, WellCare Health, had a buy signal coming into today's action. And when I took this screenshot, it was up 
1%, you would have known about that signal coming in to today. And here's what it looked like on the chart. Oversold buy, meaning it made an eight-day low with a bullish power gauge rating, what we call a low-risk entry point. Industry, medical care is now strong. It's in a strong uptrend. The last time there was a signal was remember, when the stock moved up over 10 points from 75 to 85. And you can see that the last four times they've reported, they've reported a positive earnings surprise. And they're due to report again on May 3rd. So we've just gone through a process where you could have traded the spider if you thought the market was going up. And now you're buying all 500 stocks in the S&P. When you drill down to the sector ETFs, you see utilities, financials, technology, healthcare, materials, all with bullish potential based on the power gauge. You find that PTH ETF, drill down, and now you're finding one of the strongest stocks in the ETF. So you can create a portfolio or trade a variety of instruments. The individual stock will obviously go up more percentage-wise than a group of 40 or 50 stocks, which are likely to go up more than the large cap names once small caps come back in favor. Now, there's a group of stocks called the FANG stocks that I think were their own sector in 2015. We've already showed you how in the spring of 15, these stocks were leading the S&P to new highs above 2100, but the smaller stocks in the S&P were not following suit. So I thought it would be interesting to go through the charts of these four stocks quickly to see what's changed. Well, Facebook is in the middle of their two-day sort of tell-it-like-it-is meeting where they introduce Wall Street to the new products that they're thinking of coming out with. But the power gauge rating turned bearish yesterday because a major brokerage firm downgraded the stock. So Facebook had been one of the better acting of the FANG stocks in 2015 and 2016. It's now trying to hold on to that uptrend. It's made a double top. We'll see how it does. Amazon, on the other hand, has been a disaster for investors. This is that pure momentum play where a stock is stronger than the market but doesn't have the fundamentals to support it. So the power gauge was neutral, but Amazon had a great run last year. Two positive earnings surprises, three actually, back here in April, then again in July, and then again in October. And as the stock made its new high, it exhibited a pattern that we think is very, very powerful. You saw it in the spiders, and it happens in individual stocks. The stock made a new high. What happened to check and money flow? Red, not green. Great spot to have taken some profits in Amazon if you were long or sold call options. And then the stock started coming down, and we had a money flow sell signal just a day before earnings came out. There was a lot of anticipation. The stock ran up 50 points the day they were due to report earnings in February. Then they reported a negative earnings surprise, and it sold off from 635 all the way down to 480. And it had a bearish personality change when relative strength went from green to red. Very powerful concept. Stock changes character, you need to know about it. And we had actually put out a put recommendation on Amazon ahead of the earnings report saying to buy puts above 610, it rallied to 635 the day earnings were due out. And as you see from this screenshot, they missed estimates by a wide margin, and the stock almost immediately sold off from 635 to 561, and then proceeded all the way down to 480. We got this testimonial. I'm up over $17,000 in two weeks. You changed my life. I'm up over 17,000 just on my options trades on Google, Amazon, and Priceline. It's all from checking the check and power gauge rating. It's a godsend, and I've only been a subscriber for less than two weeks. Thank you very much, and we don't normally use someone's name, but Harry said, please use my name. So thank you, Harry Stone. Really appreciate that 
endorsement. Now, Netflix has had a bearish rating since late August. What's going on in Netflix? Well, first of all, we had a sell signal. Again, another money flow sell. The stock rallied up a bit with negative money flow and a bearish power gauge. This one came about a week and a half ahead of earnings, and earnings were disappointing. It shows green because they beat estimates, but the guidance was not good. And for the first time in five years, Netflix had a net operating loss of $750 million. Netflix is losing viewers here in the States, and they're trying to buy market share in Europe, and it doesn't look like it's working. You don't even have to know that because the power gauge is bearish, and this is a stock that is going to have a hard time getting through 110, and so we're looking for a bearish signal again on Netflix. Now, when it declined off that money flow sell signal, it had actually a 30% decline from 115 down to 80. And that's not unusual for Netflix. It happened in 2014. We had an overbought sell signal just ahead of earnings. We made it a bearish stock of the week, and it dropped 30%. In this case, 30% was over 100 points. And people who bought out of the money put options did very, very well. But people who took a saner strategy also did well. So we got this testimonial. I've decided to add Chaikin Analytics to my resources using the upcoming earnings ideas in Chaikin. Netflix had a bearish rating. JV bought three put contracts for $22.20, sold them for $93.90, a quick $21,000 profit. Now, the final FANG stock, sort of its own separate sector, with four large cap names, is Google. And Google has generally done better than the other stocks. Like Facebook, it's trying to maintain an uptrend. The power gauge has stayed neutral. So, two of the four stocks in this special sector. Amazon and Netflix bearish ratings, Facebook now again with a bearish rating, and Google trying to hold its own. Now, I'd like to show you how to use our new sector performance view to identify sector trends and ETF strengths and weaknesses. Now, the reason it's important to have a way to sort through all the information is shown here in this chart also from our friends at Bespoke Investment Group. They've got 10 sectors because they include telecom, which only has two names in it, Verizon and AT&T. We use nine. And you can see that these one-year charts show diverging trends. Telecom and utilities and consumer staples have been making new highs because people have been looking for high-yield stocks. Materials broke an uptrend. Healthcare has been in a downtrend. So is energy. And on the right, you see that even quarter by quarter, there's big changes in sector ETFs. In the first quarter, healthcare and financials were down almost 6%, whereas utilities and telecom were up about 15% each. Now that's turned around. Utilities and healthcare so far in April are down. Healthcare is up, but financials going into today were down. That changed a bit. So how do you sort through all this information? Well, we've got a new sector ETF performance view that we rolled out at the end of March. You can see a comparison chart of sector performance, weekly changes in the power bar potential for the underlying stocks in the sector ETF. You can see the largest holdings and also a summary statistics that are very important if you're going to be trading that ETF. Assets in the ETF, volume, yield, beta, and so forth. Here's what it looks like. I'm going to show you a live version of this in a minute. Let's break it down into the two slices. On the top are the nine select spider sector ETFs, and then we also have a button with 20 subsectors. They're industry groups within these sectors. You can choose up to seven of them, display them on that comparison chart for whatever time frame where you like from one week to one year. And then you also see how the power bar changed in that column labeled week and also what they've done performance-wise for the last six months. So utilities were up 9% over the last six months, energy down almost 10%. That's why it's so important to have a tool at your disposal that very quickly enables you to do these comparisons to spot changing performance. Now at the bottom, 
you're getting a breakdown of a specific ETF, in this case, the Select Spider Sector Utility ETF. We show you the largest holdings and what percentage they represent in the portfolio. And then on the right, we describe it a bit. We tell you that the utility sector has outperformed the S&P by 8%. Power bar ratio is strong with more bullish than bear stocks, currently ranked number one, has almost 50 billion in assets, trades 19 million shares a day. This is important information, it tells you what the dividend yield is and the beta and so forth. Now, this is probably a good time to switch to our live app. I haven't done this for a while, so let's hope it works well. So this is the normal Chaken workspace. I've sorted my stocks list by percent change for the day. I can get to the chart. But let's go to that sector list. And notice how the relative performance chart changes depending on what sectors you selected and what time framework you use. So let's say I want to see year to date how have these sectors that I've checked done. Well, the sector on top year to date, and I can sort them, is utilities, up 12%. At the bottom are financials, down 7% year to date. And then down here, I've got a specific sector. So let's say I want to look at the financials. I click on financials, and I see the largest stock in there is Berkshire Hathaway, followed by Wells Fargo, JP Morgan, Bank America, Citicorp. They're all reporting earnings this week, not Berkshire. And Berkshire happens to be in both the Series 1 and Series 2 of the First Trust Chaken Unit Investment Trust. Now, knowing that these stocks are going to report earnings this week, I can go from the sector view and click See All in Workspace and look what happens. This is really magic. Our development team did an incredible job on this. Here's the Select Spider Financial ETF listed by Power Gauge rating with a chart. And you see that it was up 1.2% today. If I go into my panel view, I can see exactly which stocks performed well and which stocks performed badly. So some of the banks, insurance companies, it's across the board. Only three of these. 90 stocks were down today, NASDAQ and two Realty REITs. So the financial sector was very strong. I can also generate a portfolio health check to see which of them are generating earnings this week. And there I see it, JP Morgan tomorrow. Progressive Insurance with those funky TV commercials and a, a bullish power gauge rating reports on Thursday along with Wells Fargo, Bank America, PNC, and BlackRock, and then on Friday, Regions Financials and Citicorp. This is information at your fingertips, the ability to see the market as quickly and as easily as you want. Now, if you want to see which sectors led the market today, click on S&P Sectors. They're sorted by percent change, and you can see energy led the way because the price of oil was up and energy actually broke out. Materials, financials all beat the market. Healthcare, consumer stocks, utilities lagged a bit. And if I want to see the chart on that select spider sector ETF, I see that it did quite well, up 3% today. And you can see the downtrend has been broken. You can draw that trend line. So very seamless way using these sector ETFs. Now here's a little trick. It's good to know what's happening in the short term. So this shows you how the power bar is moving. I just clicked on week and it shows you that the power bar for the energy sector is improving whereas industrials, materials, and consumer discretionary had deteriorating this week. And then you can also click on percentage change year to date and spot the trends. This is all about making it easy, saving you time, and helping you spot the trends. So let's go back to our presentation and show you what's coming next. 
we've got a new ETF analytics module coming the end of April. This will enable you to compare performance on multiple ETFs just like you saw how easy it was to compare performance on sector ETFs. It'll break down the holdings and give you that valuable data for any ETF you select. And it'll also enable you to screen the universe by fund group. If you want to look at all the Fidelity funds, Vanguard funds, iShares funds from BlackRock, or limit the universe to style like value or growth or type, market cap, and so forth. You'll be able to see the power bar changes, the ETF's largest holdings, and those summary statistics that are so important because if you're trading a low volume ETF, your fills are going to be bad and you're not going to get that same dynamic liquidity that we're all looking for. So that's coming the end of April. And then finally, at the end of May, we're going to have power gauge ratings for ETFs that combine the fundamental power gauge ratings with the technical action of the ETF itself. So one last addendum to the ETF sector theme, which is that it's important to play good defense. If you've been on these webinars before, you know how important it is, and we stress that all the time because it's the stocks that you don't own that matter. So even in a strong sector or industry group, like the food and drug retail wholesale group, there are stocks like Chipotle. Negative earnings surprise even before the E. coli scare. Sell signals along the way. Power gauge has been bearish. It's been underperforming the market. It's important to recognize these stocks because even in a strong industry group, or particularly if you're trading stocks within an industry group or a sector, you want to focus on the strongest stocks and avoid the weakest stocks. And Chipotle is certainly a stock that you wanted to avoid. When that sell signal cropped up in March, we made this our bearish stock of the week. And we used our options play ideas module that's integrated into Chaken to come up with an idea for a vertical put spread that expires on May 20th, which had the highest rating of the three potential strategies, knowing that the power gauge was bearish. The stock was 466. This was roughly um, end of March. And to put on that vertical put spread, you needed to pay $2,180. On the right, you see what that put spread is today. The stock has dropped about five and a half percent, and that put spread is already up 50 percent. This is where Chaikin is trying to make a difference by merging an options module that we've licensed from Options Play with our group and sector work and our signals. You really have a very disciplined approach to trading or investing. Now, Chaikin Analytics includes the stock screener, options play, the new earnings alerts modules, and now our sector views. We got this testimonial back in November. I'm writing to let you know how absolutely incredible Chaken Analytics has become. It started out great, but with the options and screener additions, I feel it's absolutely the best product on the market, so I've recommended it to all my investing friends. Thank you, JD. Now, Chaken Analytics for both iPad and desktop is normally $1,950 a year. Our webinar special this afternoon takes $200 off, reducing the price to $1,750 a year for both iPad and desktop and the other features that come bundled, like the portfolio health check that we just showed you and a couple we're going to describe in the next slide. You can take advantage of that offer by going to chakenanalytics.com backslash shift or contact sales at chakenanalytics.com or dial the number that's on your screen. This offer expires Friday, April 15th. That's tax day. And hopefully you've got profits to report. If you don't, Chaken Analytics is here for you. Now, when you subscribe to Chaken Analytics, you turbocharge your profits with added value. My weekly Market Insights newsletter, 
We've got a bullish or bearish stock of the week. Give you my market view, which has been cautiously bullish since February when the market bottomed out. You get small group tutorials. Joe and Michelle and their whole team will help you get set up so you can use Shaken Analytics and make good trading and investment decisions within days or weeks of using, and that's the essence of the testimonials that we've been showing you. We've now integrated the new sector analytics ETFs to follow and then ETF power gauge ratings with the screener, earnings alerts, and options play. Then finally, you get my colleague John Schlitz's daily morning insights. You don't have to be glued to CNBC to know what was happening overnight in Europe and China and what the futures are doing. It's all there in an email that you get before the opening. So I would encourage you to view this as a package, sort of like a research department in a box. So one final testimonial, 10x return in five days. In the five business days that I've been using Chaken Analytics, I've paid for the subscription over tenfold. These initial results are nothing short of outstanding. Please extend my thanks to the entire Chaken team. And team is really the key word here. We've got a committed team of 20 people here in Philadelphia who thrive on your success. They get up every day with a mission, and that mission is to make you a better investor, a better trader, help you grow your nest egg. So to give you a final inducement to subscribe to Chaken Analytics, we've got a fast action bonus. If you subscribe by midnight tonight, we'll take an additional $100 off, reducing the price of Chaken Analytics to $1,650. ChakenAnalytics.com backslash shift. And as an added bonus, for the first 10 people who subscribe by midnight, you'll get a special one-on-one -on -one phone call with me after you've been onboarded by Joe and Michelle so you know what's in Chaken Analytics and we can talk intelligently about what's been working for you, what hasn't been working, how to use Chaken to accomplish your goals. These have been very rewarding for me and for the people on the other end of the phone. So the first 10 people who subscribe by midnight tonight get that reduced price of $1,650 and a one-on-one -on -one telephone call with me. Mary Fedick will reach out to you once you've been onboarded to set up that call. We're going to have this new ETF functionality at the end of April and then ETF power gauge ratings at the end of May. Subscribe now so that you're familiar with the system when these very powerful tools get rolled out and become one of our next testimonial slides in a future webinar deck. Thank you very much and I'm going to turn it back to Joe Bacella to wind down the webinar. I really appreciate how many of you stayed on with us for what I hope was a learning experience that will help you trade and invest better. Excellent. Well, Mark, thank you so much for your time tonight. Thank you, everybody, for submitting questions. I believe we got to about as many of them as we could. I know there's still a few more trickling in, um, but we definitely want to thank you all very much for coming out. If you uh, give us a call right now, 877-697-6783, we'll be able to get the remaining questions answered. Um, but be sure to take advantage of Mark's offer, um, 1650 for a full year to check in analytics. This, of course, will include our subscriber sessions, uh, the daily sessions that myself, as well as Michelle Greenblatt here, uh, host every day uh, to get you up to speed and uh, doing well in the market. Um, so one more time, thank you very much for coming out. Have a great evening and we'll talk to you next time.